Hello, I'm Rick Feinberg. I've been an astronomy enthusiast since I was 12. I studied physics at Rice University and astronomy at Harvard. After earning my doctorate, I switched from research to science communication and spent 22 years at Sky and Telescope magazine, including nine as president of the parent company and eight as editor in chief. Since 2009, I've been press officer of the American Astronomical Society, which last year acquired Sky and Telescope, bringing my career full circle. Now, extraterrestrial life isn't necessarily what we see on TV or in the movies. It potentially runs the gamut from primitive microorganisms to intelligent beings capable of interstellar communication and perhaps even interstellar travel. I don't think scientists know enough about the origin and evolution of life on Earth to be able to argue convincingly that life is or isn't likely or even possible anywhere else in the universe. What we do know, however, is that life appeared very early in Earth's history, that for most of that history, only simple organisms lived on Earth, and that life has adapted to nearly every environment on the planet, including on the deep sea floor in total darkness, nourished by minerals released in hydrothermal vents, such as black smokers. Now, I know it's not reasonable to extrapolate from a sample of one, but I'd like to think that life is ubiquitous in the universe and that primitive life is much more plentiful than advanced intelligent life, and that perspective informs this presentation. I can think of at least five different places where, or ways how, we might discover extraterrestrial life. On Mars, the only other planet besides Earth in our solar system's habitable zone, of which I'll say more in a moment. On one of the large moons of the giant planets in the outer solar system. On one of the thousands of known exoplanets orbiting other stars. By detecting a radio beacon or a pulsed laser beam from an advanced civilization in another planetary system or by encountering one or more aliens visiting from another planetary system. Finding life beyond Earth would surely be one of the most extraordinary discoveries ever. But as Carl Sagan used to say, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. There have been many past claims of evidence of extraterrestrial life. Examples include ancient petroglyphs depicting alien visitors, evidence for biological activity in an experiment on NASA's Mars Viking landers, fossils of microscopic organisms in a Martian meteorite, erratic variations in a star's brightness being caused by interference from an alien megastructure, and the unusual properties and motions of Oumuamua indicating that it's a spaceship rather than an interstellar asteroid. But none of these claims have survived careful scrutiny. There's always been a viable alternative explanation. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence, or SETI, using radio telescopes has been underway for more than a half century. But the radio spectrum is so wide and the universe so big that we've explored only a tiny fraction of the places where an alien signal could potentially be found. And wouldn't we even recognize an alien signal if we picked up one? Even if astronomers do receive what they think is a strong candidate for an extraterrestrial transmission, they'll still have to convince the rest of the scientific community. And if experience is any guide, that will be a very tall order. One of the areas of greatest excitement in astronomy right now is the discovery and characterization of exoplanets, especially those in their star's habitable zone. This is traditionally defined as the Goldilocks zone, where the temperature is neither too hot nor too cold for liquid water to survive on the surface of a rocky planet with a protective atmosphere. Over the last 25 years, astronomers have confirmed more than 4,000 exoplanets, and they extrapolate that there are at least as many planets in our galaxy as there are stars, hundreds of billions, we already know of dozens of exoplanets in their star's habitable zones, and there could be a billion more. Could one or more of them be truly Earth-like, teeming with life? 
telescopes capable of observing fine details on exoplanets aren't even on the drawing board yet. But astronomers have already demonstrated that when a planet transits or crosses in front of its host star, it is possible to get a telescopic spectrum of the planet's atmosphere and look for chemical signatures of life. The James Webb Space Telescope, to be launched in 2021, and the next generation of extremely large ground-based telescopes, the first of which will come online in the late 2020s, will study many exoplanets this way. But how will astronomers know if they found signs of life? Every time someone proposes a definitive biomarker, someone else shows that the same organic molecule can be produced abiotically. Again, even if astronomers do detect what they think is a strong candidate for signs of life in an exoplanet's atmosphere, they'll still have to convince the rest of the scientific community. And once again, that will be a very tall order. Meanwhile, the definition of habitable zone needs an update. One of the key insights from recent space missions to the outer planets is that planetary surfaces aren't the only places where liquid water can exist. At least three of Jupiter, Jupiter's moons and two of Saturn's appear to harbor oceans of liquid water beneath their icy crusts. Saturn's moon Enceladus even sprays salty water into space through cracks in its surface, the so-called tiger stripes. By the current definition, neither Jupiter nor Saturn is in the habitable zone. Yet planetary scientists now think that their ocean world moons are the best places to look for extraterrestrial life within our own solar system. Now, nobody really expects to find life on Mars now, because though the red planet was warm and had rivers and oceans in the past, it is now cold and dry. Still, NASA's Mars Perseverance rover will collect soil samples to be returned to Earth by a future mission and examined for signs of past life. In the next few decades, planetary scientists hope to launch robotic probes to the ocean worlds of the outer solar system, including Jupiter's Europa and Saturn's Enceladus. In my opinion, such missions offer our best chance to find not just evidence, but convincing evidence that life exists beyond Earth. It'll be hard to dispute the discovery when the space agency posts a virtual reality video on the successor to YouTube that lets you watch as tiny extraterrestrial critters swim past the camera and wave their weird little tentacles or other protuberances. Seeing is believing. So the question we're debating really should be this. How will extraterrestrial life first be convincingly discovered? My answer? via the identification of living organisms in the subsurface ocean on one of Jupiter's or Saturn's moons. Now, I don't expect you to read these image credits in real time, but they're here in case you want to look at them later. This is Rick Feinberg, wishing you clear skies and happy alien hunting, and hoping that you stay safe and healthy out there. Thanks for watching.